Hey guys, it's Kyle from AK Pro Films, and welcome to this brand new video where we'll be discussing my top 10 OS 10 Yosemite tips and tricks. Some of these tips you might know of, and some of these tips you might not know of. So, without any more further ado, let's jump into this video right away. Alright, so let's dive right into the top 10 OS 10 Yosemite tips and tricks. To begin, let me show you what hot corners are. So what hot corners are is when you move your mouse to a certain corner of the screen, it'll perform a simple function. So first what you want to do is open up System Preferences, go to Mission Control, and go to Hot Corners. And from here you can figure what each corner of the screen will do when you move your mouse to the corresponding side of the screen. So for instance, if I move my mouse to the bottom left hand side of the screen, it will open up Mission Control. So what happens is, when I move my mouse down here, it will open up Mission Control. And the same can be applied if you perform different ones to each side of the screen. So something unique to the computers that have two graphics cards like this computer, which is a 15 inch MacBook Pro button and display, is that you have automatic graphics switching. So if we open up the battery saver preferences, I'll show you what that is. So what automatic graphic switching is, is if you have a computer with two graphics cards, if you're performing a task that is less graphics intensive, then it will go to the lower end graphics card. But if you're video editing or playing a game, then it will boost it up to the higher performance graphics card. And also by turning on this setting, it helps with battery life as it determines what graphics card is needed for the current task. So something unique is that on Safari, you can open that up and go to the tabs page and you can see that you have your other iCloud enabled devices with their Safari tabs being shown. And what this means is that if I'm surfing a web page on my phone and then I happen to jump on my computer, I can close those tabs remotely by pressing the X that appears to the right of the website name. So it's pretty convenient so I can just exit out of those tabs and clear them from my phone without having to log back into my phone and clear them. So another cool thing is found inside of the Notes app. So if we open up the Notes app, we can see I have a shopping list note. So for instance, I have something that says buy fruit. And I can also add something that says buy juice. You can add on or do whatever note you want. But let's say we want to add that to our desktop so we can add or change things right away instead of opening up the Notes app every time we want to make a change. So just double tap on your note and then it'll be added to your desktop so you can change it or delete items or notes entirely. So that's kind of cool so you can just edit your note a lot faster and a lot easier as well instead of opening up the notes app every time you want to make a change. So some people might be annoyed with dashboard that it causes them a lot of trouble or it's just annoying and all you want to do to turn that off or make it appear as a different option you want to go to system preferences and go to mission control. So for instance for dashboard I have it turned on as an overlay. So if I open up dashboard, it appears as an overlay instead of a separate space. So that means when it was a space, it was like this, where it had to open up a whole nother window just to show me dashboard. So it's kind of nice just so I can show dashboard as an overlay instead, so it's less intrusive. You can also turn off dashboard entirely, so you can't even open it unless you come back and turn it back on. So I just find it showing it as an overlay is a lot nicer than having it open up as a separate space. So Spotlight has been on the Mac for quite some time now and they finally made some updates inside of Yosemite. So for instance I can easily type in a math equation and it will give me the answer right away and I can also type something in to get some information a lot quicker instead of opening up Safari and performing a simple search. So for instance, I can type in the quadratic formula and it'll give me the formula right away without me having to perform another action inside of another app. So let me show you that. So I can type in quadratic equation and it pulls up a Wikipedia article right there for me. So it just makes using your Mac a lot easier and a lot more efficient. You also have some options inside of system preferences of what you can show and what you don't want to show. 
So another thing on the Mac is taking a screenshot. Some people know how to take screenshots and some people don't, so I'll just cover that for right now. So to make a simple screenshot, all you need to do is press Command Shift 3. And as you just heard there, it took a screenshot. And if you want to take a screen clipping, all you need to do is press Command Shift 4. You're presented with a little target here. And then with that target, you can click and drag on your screen to make a screen clipping. And it just saves it to your desktop, so you can easily view that. So that's just a very simple way of taking a screenshot on your Mac. So a lot of people don't know how to change their app icon, so I'll show you how to do that right now. So all you want to do is open up Safari, and you want to navigate to an icon or a picture that you want to assign to an app. So all you want to do is save the image onto your desktop or a folder of your choosing, then what you want to do is click on that image and you want to go up to edit, select all, copy, and then you can close out a preview. You can open up finder and find your app. For instance, I'm going to change the app store icon and you just want to press get info. So now just press command V, which means to paste and then type in your password to change the icon. And there you go. You're presented with your new app icon. And then you can drag that onto your desktop to replace the old one. So just click and drag onto your dock. You're presented with a nice new icon. So to change it back, all you want to do is go to that and delete your old one by just clicking on the icon up here and press delete. Then you can type in your password, press enter, and then from here you can drag the new one onto your dock. So after dragging the app icon onto your dock, we just reverted back to the old one that we previously had. So that's how you revert back to the older app icon. So you can also show your hard drives and connected devices on your desktop. So all you want to do is go to Finder Preferences, and you can choose what devices you want to see on your desktop. So for instance, I can show my hard drives, or I can show my external discs, CDs, DVDs, iPods, or connected servers. So I'm going to show my hard drive, and there we go, we can see it, and it's on our desktop. So there we go, that is how you show your connected devices on your desktop. So another cool thing found inside of OS X Yosemite is the ability to use AirDrop to transfer files from your iDevice to your Mac. So all you want to do is go to your iDevice and find the appropriate picture and then click share and then you're presented with your options. So from here you want to make sure that you have AirDrop turned on and set to everybody. And then you want to jump on over to your Mac and you want to go to Finder AirDrop. You want to make sure everyone is selected here as well. So then jump back over to your iDevice and then you want to press on your MacBook or your device that you want to airdrop it to. So I'll just tap on that and we can see that it is being transferred. Then when it's being transferred you can turn off airdrop on both devices if you so choose. And then you can open up your Mac and you can find your image saved in your downloads folder. So it's pretty easy to airdrop your files to your Mac instead of having to text it to yourself or email it to yourself to save it on your Mac. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video where we discussed my top 10 OS X Yosemite tips and tricks. Down below in the comments section, let us know of any other tips and tricks that we didn't include in this video. As well, make sure to check out Quick Tech Tips, a brand new series on this channel where a video is uploaded every Monday consisting of tips and tricks for a variety of devices. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.